So Halloween ends finally came and it's every bit as controversial as it was said to be. Just to top it off, overall this trilogy, I, th I felt that it was very consistent with Halloween 2018, and then I think that Kills is actually the best of the three, and I think that it fully realizes what this one was trying to do. Also, David Gordon Green for the first two did seem like just making a pretty straightforward, crowd-pleasing Halloween trilogy which is why the direction they go in for this one is just so bizarre. They try a whole lot of different things, and I actually think that some of it works, but I think a lot of it doesn't, especially as a finale to this trilogy and the series as a whole. With this series, it really does have a risk of kind of feeling redundant, just Michael Myers going on a killing spree on Halloween, like the usual stuff. So I think that when they do something different, I really am kind of looking for that and interested in what they're doing. I want to give it a chance instead of just shitting on it. But with this one, it's just, I don't know why they would pick this entry in particular to do something different with it. If this was just another Halloween entry that they just wanted to do something different with, I actually don't think that the concept is bad at all, and I, I would have been really a lot more interested and invested in it. Um, and I was enjoying it while I was watching it, but every time I thought about, like, this is Halloween ends, this is supposed to be the last one, w what are we doing here? That kind of put a damper on things because again I think if this was just another movie in the series it would have worked a lot better but this is Halloween ends this movie was marketed as the big finale to Lori and Michael's story it was the big final battle between them and that's something that they do provide but it's bogged down uh, in a whole lot of other story uh, storylines plot details it's just it's not the main focus of the story so from now on I'm going full spoilers I just don't really feel like I could talk about these plot details in any real meaningful light without discussing full-on spoilers. I walked in kind of blind, and I think that for the sake of your viewing, viewing experience that you should walk in blind and kind of make up your own mind on what you think of it, but yeah, I'm going full spoilers. So basically what's at the heart of this controversy with this movie is the character of Corey Cunningham. He's just the new addition that kind of takes the center stage as the main character for most of it, and I'm... I'm very mixed on it. I don't know why they would do that for Halloween ends. Again, if this was just another movie in the series and they decided to take the focus off of the main characters and off of Michael to kind of explore this guy and his journey into evil, I think that that would work a lot better. And there are some concepts that I actually really like with him. He kind of has this almost apprentice thing with Michael where he stares into his eyes and it kind of unlocks the evil in him. I think it, it surrenders him to darkness which is an interesting concept and then from there he kind of assumes the role of the killer there's a couple great scenes in particular where him and Michael team up to kill people it was kind of an interesting idea and I thought it was cool but unfortunately the Corey thing kind of goes nowhere my main issue with it is that it kind of focuses on him like the first hour and a half of the movie most of it's about him and you kind of just see him go full 180 he's pretty timid he's a lot more sympathetic in the beginning but then it's just he kind of goes full on evil after it and i don't know goth punk whatever he just gets kind of weird and it, it's definitely something that isn't gonna fly with a lot of people him taking up this much of the runtime and halloween ends the thing is too michael myers doesn't even make an appearance in this movie until about 45 minutes in which is just crazy i'm really kind of surprised that they let them get away with some of the things that they did here because it's it's again it's in contrast with halloween and halloween kills those were very fan base and crowd pleasing movies i know a lot of people don't like kills again i think it's the strongest of the trilogy what they do here is just so out of left field that i mean if they did something different with michael myers that would be kind of different but it really does follow the trail of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 and of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch of just going completely different, and I don't think that it's going to please the fans. Going in, I, I got the heads up that uh, this movie was going to be different. Everything that uh, David Gordon Green and Jamie Lee Curtis were saying leading up to the movie was that it's going to be very different. I didn't seek out reviews because I didn't want it to taint my opinion, but basically I saw the thumbnails where it's like, this is going to piss people off. What were they thinking? Super different. I kind of knew that something was up. I just didn't know what it was, but after seeing it, you know, it's pretty obvious that it's a Corey Cunningham shaped hole in the movie. So this movie's greatest asset is also its greatest liability because being so different is a good thing especially in the series. We've seen the same things done a lot, 
but it's also a lesson in just woefully wrong marketing. Like they mismarketed this movie so badly. What they showed in the trailers was just not stereotypical, but pretty generic Halloween action. Michael vs. Lori, that was what we were kind of promised. And they made it seem like that was just the whole movie. Not at all. You really don't get that until the end. To its credit though, is that they do have a very satisfying end to this movie. It's just weird because you kind of fumble around for an hour and a half and then you get to a very good closing for the series. Lori beats Michael, gets him, they take his body and they throw him into the grinder. Like, that's conclusive. His body is destroyed. There is no way that this guy can come back after this. But at the same time, it's just the journey to getting there doesn't feel like the, the centerpiece of the story. The story doesn't feel like a finale. It feels like just a different entry trying to do something different. Like this would feel like more of a middle chapter or something. It doesn't feel like a, a series finale. And in that respect, it's, it's kind of disappointing. Still, on its own, I think that when I rewatch this movie, I can enjoy it in its own right. I think that if you put those expectations to bed about what this movie should be, you can enjoy it a little more because it does do something different it takes big swings but again I just I don't know what he was thinking with this David Gordon Green felt so hell-bent on providing an authentic Halloween experience for everybody and just making a crowd-pleasing trilogy but and he does that for the first two and then he just goes in a completely different direction with this one this was never the plan they I think originally had two movies planned apparently and they would just take place on the same night it got stretched to three where three was actually still supposed to take place on the same night COVID happened they changed things a lot. Like this was just, this does not feel like this was the plan at all. I think they totally changed things. It feels like they changed things. Everything leading up to this tells me that they changed it because of COVID and just different ideas or whatever. But I mean, at the end of the day, there were a lot of red flags going into this. There is no reason that they needed to put this movie out on Peacock and in theaters on the same day. What that tells me is that they had no faith in this movie. As well as that, they put out a trailer like a mere two months before the movie came out. What's that about? Like, that's weird. Movies market like sometimes six months in advance. I also think that there's that issue of the embargo, I'm pretty sure, didn't even release until the day of the movie coming out, so you couldn't get reviews until the day or the day before. I mean, I kind of just wanted to sleep on it and see how I feel about it the next day, and I just, I still don't know. I still feel very mixed on it. I just, it's definitely the weakest of the three. As a Halloween movie, it works the least out of the three, but it also, too, I think might actually be the best written of the three, which is antithetical to everything I say, but I think that the characters are written the best in this movie that they are in the other movies. I think that it all works. I think motivation-wise, everything works. It's just that they take such different story directions that don't feel like Halloween. A lot of people are going to be disappointed by that. So overall, if you want a very different Halloween experience, I'd recommend this movie. Other than that, if you are looking for just a very straightforward approach to this material of just Michael versus Laurie, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Watch the Corey Cunningham movie. Um, no. I'd still check it out, especially if you checked out the other movies. It has a good ending. It just feels kind of disjointed, and it feels like this series of movies is now kind of disjointed. Because I really think that they probably could have combined kills in this, and then maybe the Corey Cunningham movie could be a totally different thing. But... That's just me. Thanks for watching my review for Halloween Ends and my analysis on everything. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you later.